All right. Welcome, uh, Postflow Plus users. Uh, so here we have uh, a special guest today. And uh, let me introduce, I think from what I know, I might miss a few things, Matt. So you need to help me out here after I <laughs> sure. destroy you. Uh, sure, no Matt, um, Matthew Hunt is uh, a, po a pro poker player and a coach with uh, $2.5 million in lifetime tournament earnings. And uh, not only that, I think anyone can be a player, right? But he also has 2,000 hours of one-to-one -one coaching. Um, he has done 200 hours of videos and webinars and coached hundreds of students. Uh, he is currently the coach for uh, the famous Soul for Y Academy and uh, Poker Detox. Uh, so, so, yeah, and also... Um, He's the solver guy in the, in the camp, uh, in their camp, basically, uh, you know, running um, uh, running solves in pure solver, simple uh, monker and whatnot. So, so yeah, um, and a uh, few interesting things about uh, Matt is uh, he has lived and worked in 11 different countries, um, Russia, Turkey, US, Mexico, and... Uh, he can speak sure. fluent French and uh, conversational yeah, Spanish. Yeah, don't, don't ask me to do it. Don't ask me to do it on air. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I can, it's been a while since I practiced, but yeah, my French is, my French is pretty much fluent. It, I, it was like 13 years ago that I lived there, though, so it's probably not as good as it was. Yes. Uh, and Matt, now I'll leave. I'll leave uh, the contact details for Matthew uh, and uh, Solve for Academy, uh, Solve for Way Academy, and Poker Detox in the description. Um, today, uh, I'm just gonna pick his brain on how we can best use Postflop Plus. Show him, mm -hmm. you know, play Matthew and playing against Postflop Plus will give you guys a good uh, a good introduction to how you should approach solves and what are the data points that you can look at. To make your decisions, understand your uh, just understand your theory better, and uh, how you can implement effectively. Like in some sports, like you need to have that ease of implementation too. So, and that's where Matthew is going to help us. Matthew, let I mean, let's go. I think I need. To call yeah, you can. I, I'm used to call you Matt, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm you Matt. can just call me Matt. Literally, <laughs> nobody calls me nobody calls me Matthew. So just call me Matt. The, problem, the, the uh, only other thing I want to correct in the intro is I'm not working with Poker Detox anymore, but I did work okay. with them from like 2018 through 2020 on both the cash game side and the the tournament side as well. So I've done a I've done a bunch of work with with all kinds of uh, different people. I worked, with, I worked with Tournament Poker Edge as well for a while. So uh, anybody who's been consuming poker content for a few years has probably seen my stuff somewhere. I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, we, we, it, it's, it's great that our users can have uh, access to your, your brain map. So, so let's begin. So uh, so we have this MTT spots, cash spots, and spin spots in post plus, mm -hmm. and then um, probably we can look at forty big blinds or twenty big blinds today. So uh, uh, you mentioned beforehand that we want to. I think you like three bit spots because it's uh, it's pretty nuanced and uh, have some interesting solver uh, theories in there. So let's uh, jump in. Sure. Let's let's start with some three bit spots. I think the the tough thing about these. The, the tough thing about three bet spots in, in solvers is that we're, we're kind of accustomed to three bet pots playing out in a certain way because of how pool tendencies are. Yeah. But pool tendencies when it comes to actual three bet ranges are really far away from what solver three bet ranges are. Mm -hmm. So what's kind of interesting is we'll, we'll probably see some, uh, some outputs for these solves that are pretty different to, to what we might expect. And we're, we're playing with a pretty low SPR. Mm -hmm. So depending on what types of, um, depending on what types of bet sizings we have available, depending on, you know, what the positional arrangement is, some boards are going to play out in the solve somewhat differently to how they would play out in practice, because in practice, in three bet pots, you can get away with just C betting small on almost any run out and you're still going to do fine, you know, but, yeah. In the solve, um, you know, when we're actually talking about playing against uh, slightly better opponents, or when we're trying to implement slightly more complex strategies, um, 
yeah, you, you see some stuff that's, that's a little unexpected. Sometimes you see every now and again, you see like some, some all in shoves for one and a half times the pot, you know, mm. every now and again, you see some, some 10% pot C bets, you know, stuff like that coming up. So um, interested sure. to see what, uh, what the solves we have are going to come up with. So we do have a wide range of uh, formations, like from low jack mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, uh, low jack as a side jack, all the way to, you know, mm -hmm. playing in position, playing out of position um, as the three better. So mm -hmm. uh, small blind three bit is what usually the pool is familiar with. And that's where there might be some EVs that, that our users might be uh, leaving on the table. So, uh, sure let's go maybe small blind versus butter that's probably one of those common sure. seems, common seems spots that people um people play uh i'm Absolutely. just going to click on this information button which is going to pop up i'm going to play as small blind and mm -hmm. the pre-flop action here is 2.3 big blinds is what button raised and mm -hmm. small blind uh three bit 8.05 big blinds and button called the ranges sure. that we gave yeah. for this sim is based on preflop solves in Monker. Uh, and that looked like something like this, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, we got tens plus uh, good uh, good ASX hands, good Broadway, like King Queen suited, um, and then some of the some of random hands like King Six suited and Queen Nine suited the uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> some of the, some of the hands that Solver loves to choose from this area usually. Uh, yeah. And also, we mm -hmm. do have uh, uh, offsuit A6 hands as well because it blocks villains racing range, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean uh, race calling range. Uh, so when right. when Button calls, he has all the pairs except for Jacks and Queens, and he doesn't have Queen Jack suited. And he has the uh, he does trap with kings and aces at this level uh, because obviously the pot is eighteen point one and forty big blinds, so uh, thirty two big blinds behind. Um, still, there is uh, you know he can get everything everything in by the river, so he traps a little bit there, and he does have offsuit broadways as well. So, what do you think about mm -hmm. this range, Matt? I think this is definitely one of the areas where the the average pool tendency is is way far away from these ranges. Like mm. the 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 average player, especially in live MTTs, but in online as well. Like you're you're not going to see people, for example, like partially not three betting ace king in the small blind. Like you're mm. nobody nobody is just peeling ace king in the small blind with any frequency in almost mm. any tournament against the button open. It just mm. isn't there. Mm. So uh, and even like ace ace queen ace jack. Uh, three betting in pure, like that's probably what people actually are doing. Um, yes. But the, the, um, oh, sorry, ace, ace, wait, hang on a minute. I'm, I'm misreading it. Ace queen and ace jack off are not in the three betting range. So ace queen and ace jack off must, that, I assume that means they're either calling pure or they're just ripping for 40 big blinds. Uh, we can, can you check, check which in. of those two things they're doing? Yeah, we can check in solar plus where we can go to MTT. And then we can mm. say flat and three bit, 40 big blinds, small blind versus button. Uh, they're actually okay. ripping ace king off, yeah. ace queen oh, off, ace okay. jack off, king All queen right. off, queen jack off. Uh, okay. So that, that makes a bit more sense um, in, the, in the sense that it makes a lot more sense that ace king would be ripping as opposed to just peeling. But mm. at the same time, people aren't just ripping 40 big blinds either. Like people yeah. are just three betting, you know? So a lot of these hands that are actually playing as a pretty high frequency shove, like a lot of those middle suited hands, like mm -hmm. the queen jack suited through 10, nine suited mm -hmm. um, pocket sevens, eights, nines, like a lot of that stuff yep. in terms of how people actually play. Most of those hands are either calling or three betting. They're not just jamming. So the actual non all in three bet range in this particular solve is probably a lot more polarized than what it is in, in real game in play real life. because, because people are not just taking those middle strength hands and just ripping them for 40 bigs. They're, they're three betting them. They're three betting their King Jack suited a fair amount and stuff like that, because uh, that people are just not inclined to, to take on that much risk of shoving for 40 big blinds when uh, there's such a small pot out there. So I think that this range is, is slightly more polarized than um, population. than the pool the population's range uh, when it comes to the small blind three bet. And I think the button 
call range is wider than the pool tendency. Um, and it's also a little bit more protected in the sense that With the I don't think the pool, kings, yeah. Yeah, I don't think the, the pool traps v- that often. Um, yeah. But I also think that the pool is going to the pool is not going to like just rip the ace six suited through ace four suited a hundred percent of the time here. You know, they're, they're probably um, that they're, they're doing a few things differently uh, in that regard. Like they're not going to, yeah, it's gotta be just a rip. Uh, right. yeah, ace five is ripping. Ace yeah. Six, they're not, the they're six. people are just that that's happening oh. like almost 0% frequency from the pool, yep. you know? Yep. yep. Um, and and like even like the ace eight mm. off just peeling the three bet here that's not mm. even really happening people are mm. people are going to pick like jack 10 off instead which they apparently shouldn't judging by the solve here mm. and at the same time people are also going to take like a lot of the lower pairs and just rip instead of ripping the suited aces which mm. according to the you know the, the solve here they they shouldn't be doing yeah. so there's definitely going to be some variation here. I don't see people peeling three bets with queen four suited. I don't see people peeling with, you know, I don't see people like peeling queen five pure, but then folding queen seven pure. Like that doesn't yeah. really happen either. <laughs> yeah, that's one of so the biggest of free flop souls here. With MTTs, it's, um, I think the, the way to look at it is that the, the point that you're at in the tournament is going to very, very heavily influence how people play. Right. And so what you want is to have a baseline idea of how the spot is supposed to play out. And Mm -hmm. you also want to understand the principles behind uh, the spot well enough that you can have an immediate go-to adaptation that you can use. So for example, in this scenario, um, if you, let's say you look at this pool tendency and you say, okay, well, the pool is supposed to be jamming over a three bet from the bottom where the fair frequency, they're supposed to be jamming these hands, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And let's say you think that the pool is not jamming enough. Mm. And maybe you think that they are folding a little bit too much with some of the hands that are supposed to be calling. And then they're calling with some of the hands that are supposed to be jamming. Jamming. Well, Immediately, both of those things combine to mm. allow you to three bet more. So you can say, well, if they're folding hands they should be calling, that means I get to three bet more. And if they're not jamming with hands that should be jamming and putting me in a tough spot, that also means I get to three bet more. Yep. So yep. we want to start looking at an adaptation that that says, okay, well, what hands could three bet that are currently not three betting and what hands would benefit from three betting? And in yep. this particular type of spot, uh, it kind of makes sense to actually go in the direction that is, is pretty much what people already do in the sense that we kind of talked about they they don't three bet all in with like king jack suited or queen jack suited in this spot. You know, mm-hmm. they, they three bet to a, a non all in size a lot of the time yeah. because they know that they're getting a lot of folds and they're not getting jammed on that often. So they don't have to worry that much about being denied their equity by... Yeah just being shoved on by a random ace. So we can three bet more linear in these spots against players who are not four betting enough and who are folding too much. And in a very general sense, that's a really, really common thing that you can just do in tournaments that works in tons and tons of spots because it's really hard to find a spot where people are actually four betting too much. And it's also really hard to find a spot where people are not folding enough. Yep. Generally, those spots are going to be the spots where they're opening too tight of a range in the first place, or let's say they're opening to too big of a size or something yeah. like that. Right. So for the most part, um, the starting point for how you should assume people are going to play in tournaments is to fold too much and not fall bad enough. And you can build most of your exploitative strategies from there once you mm-hmm. have a decent idea of which hands benefit from being in which categories. So yep. a lot of those those linear three bet type hands, those suited Broadway hands, they benefit a lot from just growing the size of the pot and getting called. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas a hand like six, five suited, that hand doesn't really benefit a ton from growing the size of the pot and getting called Mm -hmm. because it's getting called by a lot of stuff that dominates it. And it's still getting a good chunk of folds, but 
Uh, there's not that much 5x in the villain's range in the first place. Mm. So we don't benefit that much from, you know, like, okay, we're not we're not going to fold out ace five suited. We might yep. fold out king five and queen five suited, but, uh, you know, we're not improving the equity of our hand that much by three betting six five suited in this spot. Whereas if yep. you, let's say you you take a hand like jack seven suited, that's yep. a hand that might might be in a category where if our opponent is opening hands like, all the king seven off, queen seven off, ace seven off, um, you know, some of the offsuit jack X broadways, and they're folding all that stuff when we three bet jack seven yep. suited. Jack yep. seven suited is benefiting a ton from three betting there because mm -hmm. even though it's never really getting called by worse, it still mm -hmm. has playability when it does get called and it's folding out a lot of the hands that dominate it. So yep. the, the way to look at it is that the hands, if you're going to add weaker hands into your three bet range, Mm -hmm. The ones that benefit the most from, from like the ones you want to pick are the ones that can fold out hands that are dominating them. And yep. particularly that's going to be this portion of suited hands that has one Broadway card. So, you know, like a, a queen eight suited can fold out a queen 10 off and, and yeah. really benefit from that, you know, um, yep. because be, just the offsuit Broadway's needing to fold a lot. And, the, you know, in a lot of spots, that's going to be pretty consistent. Uh, if you can, you know, three bet uh, a hand that has one Broadway card and fold out all the, a lot of the stuff that dominates it, you're yep. going to do pretty well. Um, yep. The the offsuit aces can work in that regard too, but the problem there is that the suited versions of the dominating aces are not going to fold. So you, you like you sort of end up in a spot where like yeah, you can three bet ace five off, and maybe they fold a six, a seven, ace eight offsuit, mm -hmm. um, but they're not folding a seven, ace eight, ace nine suited, you know, all that stuff. Uh, so, it, and it, they're also not really calling with like a lot of king five, queen five, that type of stuff. So it doesn't really help you a ton. So um, basically being able to fold out hands that dominate you is really, really powerful. And at the same time, being able to get called by hands that you are dominating is also really powerful, which is why sometimes a jack seven suited can function better than a six five in, in a lot of these spots. So yeah, so 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 just to summarize, guys, I think uh, there's a lot of golden nuggets there. So you have to rewatch it. Uh, but uh, what I understood from hearing the mad is basically adaptation is the key. You start with the solver ranges, and then make sure that this is the base uh, three bit range that you're three betting as a minimum, but also expand it out so we get more value from villains falls or villains opening range. Uh, you need to look for exploits. Uh, after you've studied and focused on what you have learned from the solvers. All right. Yeah, and it, gonna it, be... it, it, it's also, sorry to keep, keep right. going on, but um, it's also, it, you don't have to take this as a baseline and then just add more hands into this. You can also take hands out of this. Yes. If, if you think that the, pur the purpose of those hands is defeated by what your opponent is doing. So for example, like the small blind is three betting, hands like queen 10 off, jack 10 off in a partial frequency there. With those hands here, if you think that when you three bet jack 10 off, for example, if your opponent is not peeling your three bet with jack eight suited and jack seven suited type hands in the way that they should be, and you also know that they're never going to fold queen jack or king jack or ace jack, then now jack 10 off doesn't really serve any purpose as a three bet anymore. So those hands, particularly those offsuit ones, I think can can quite often come out of the range, yeah. and um, similarly, yeah. like the the ace nine off, for example, you know your opponent is supposed to be peeling ace eight off, some ace seven off, some ace five off against your three bet. If they're not if they're not doing that, and if they're not peeling their nine seven suited very often and stuff like that, suddenly the benefit mm -hmm. of three betting ace nine off is massively reduced. So that hand can just slightly prefer to call in some spots because calling keeps all of those dominated hands in your opponent's range. Yep. Um, in a, in a very general sense, you don't want to put yourself in a position where your opponent never folds anything better and never calls anything worse. And there are a lot of spots where those ACE nine, ACE eights are right in that region where they have those worse hands in range, but they're not going to call them if you three bet. And they're also not going to fold anything that's better. Yep, uh, I think that's um, that's a good intro to ranges, guys. I think we're just on the screen number one. <laughs> we haven't even played a <laughs> hand, and that's already like yeah. you know a lot of 
visiting from um, from Matt. All right, let's play the spot. Uh, sure. As the small blind, uh, and these are the ranges that will be used in the salt, so keep that in mind. And uh, we're not going to bother with the flop texture, but that's something that you can do with post flop plus, where you can limit mm -hmm. your training to a certain flop type, like a monotone flop or you know high uh, king high flop or a jack high flop, whatever it is. I usually find jack high flops are problematic for me. I usually do that. But uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, for today's session, let's go into playing let's a sport a as, uh, small blind. Ace King, uh, straight away, we are hitting with okay. <laughs> a tough decision. Sure. Ace King suited, that's a, a slam dunk three bet. And then, <laughs> you know what? We right. get a monotone low board, six, four, right. close. What do you think about this, uh, Matt? Um, th this is a, it's an interesting spot when we have when we have these two bet sizings available, just one third or two thirds, because... On monotone boards in general, the fact that both players can have a good chunk of flopped flushes, like in, in this spot, particularly in a three bet pot, each player's range because it's going to be pretty heavy on suited hands and it's going to have some pairs and offsuit stuff in there, but it's going to, going to have a lot of suited hands. Uh, and, and this board doesn't block very many of them. Each mm. player probably has about 15% or maybe even, well, probably not as high as 20%, but they probably have 10 to 15% of their range as flushes right now. So no hand in anybody's range really benefits from shoving, shoveling a lot of money into the pot on these boards because they're always up against a range that has a bunch of flushes in it. So even at a low SPR here, I think... Um, I think if we had, let's say we had infinite bet sizing options here, mm. I, I honestly think there's a good chance the solver would choose a really tiny bet size. Like the solver yep. would want to bet like two big blinds here. So um, if you do have the options here, I think you reckon like the solver right. will choose check most of the time. Uh, I, th I think with, I think that it would probably split between a check and a one third bet. And yep. most of the hands that would bet one third would probably have a club in them. Um, and the hands that check would be some, like a lot of the hands that don't have a club and then some portion of the hands that like some flopped flushes that are just protecting. And then some like aces with a club to protect and things like that. Um, I'm guessing ace king of diamonds. If we, if we have the option of two thirds, one third or check, I'm guessing it's going to prefer check. Um, but let's see. So percent check is, uh, I think we get instant feedback on top. So green means we made the decision that is same as the solver. And most likely what you said is uh, like uh, probably the reasoning behind it from a solver perspective is, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it doesn't want it to bet, you know, six, even, even six point something, uh, one third port is mm -hmm. big for the board and the range distribution in question. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's also worth noting on this board that the, the button can have all the sets, but the small blind can't really have any sets. Really have. So as a as a general rule, a board like this is going to have a probably a pretty high checking frequency from small blind. These these types of low mono boards are the ones in three bet pots where uh, even though a lot of the time we are actually going to have still pretty decent equity with our range. We might even have more than 50% equity with range. The problem is so much of our range is pretty weak now. Like all of our over cards that aren't clubs are pretty weak. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of villains range is relatively strong uh, because like I say, they do have a lot of flopped flushes and they also have sets and over pairs still in range too. Yep. And do you think like there is a check raising range for this build? Because we know that when we check, uh, button is going to do this and then he's going to put us in tough spots with hands like this exactly this so yeah we... um it I, I, as a general rule check raising happens a lot less on monotone boards than it does on other boards um because our opponent's range for betting is going to largely contain a lot of hands that have pretty easy decisions against a raise um yeah. but at this really low spr i would expect that there's going to be at least some hands that check raise the, the slightly awkward thing about the options that we have here is that our options are check raise half our stack or call or fold. Mm -hmm. And in, in real game terms, I would think that check raising all in is pretty reasonable. 
Um, check min raising is actually also reasonable here. It's not something that most people would ever really do, but it is reasonable given that a lot of our opponents uh, sort of stab hands uh, mm. actually have a, um, you know, a pretty tough decision versus that min raise. Like if they, ha like we can, we can min raise and get them to fold like off they, their broadways that have no, no club and things no like that that are just stabbing yeah. here. Um, I think that with ace king of diamonds, it's, it's actually really close here. I think that uh, this is probably much closer to a fold than most people would expect. I, this is probably one where in game, your decisions are going to be tough enough that you should you should probably just fold. Oh, but yeah. in the sol in the solver, it wouldn't surprise me if it calls. Uh, yeah. I I'd be very surprised if it raised. But I I it's going to be close between a fold and a call. I think. All right, let's get fold and then see. And then fold is uh, fold is I mean, okay. Calling is call uh, is, uh, call, uh, call is ninety three percent and raising six percent of the time. Obviously, we can ah, okay. ignore uh, sort of most of the time. So. We do have raising range of 5.4 combos. Um, so this is the range, mm -hmm. uh, range splits we are looking at. Um, and if you okay. wanted to look at what are those, um, I usually turn off these ones. Sets like pocket, I mean, not sets, but uh, pocket fives. Um, it's it's pocket not fives there like at a, yeah, it's not the there at yeah. a good frequency mm -hmm. because we checked first, right? So this is the actual frequency, same as PS Solver, yeah. the height and the mm -hmm. width of it. Um, so, uh, most of the hands that come here is Kings goes crazy. I think King of a King with the club goes, uh, mm -hmm. goes crazy. Queens, uh, again, going, uh, going on. Uh, I mean, uh, it's almost racing all in. It's, it's racing 15, yeah. uh, racing 15.4, right? So those are the hands that races. It's, uh, it's not yeah. much. Um, I would, not I would probably say, much. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I would probably say, honestly, um, when you see something appear with you know like five combos of hands like eight eight yeah. percent of range here yeah almost always i'm just going to cut that option out of my strategy like if yeah. if it's if it's telling us that this option is just such a rare frequency it's just not even really worth thinking about it yeah. because and, and part of the reason why it, it's telling us that in this spot is because yeah. the raise size is half of our stack like it's yeah. There's just not really ever going to be spots where raising half your stack is going to actually happen with a reasonable frequency because it's just such an awkward size. So yep. if we had a check min raise here, I think you might see that frequency bump up above 10%. And in yep. that instance, I would actually be like, I'd be paying attention to what, what are the are in there. combos and um, why they're doing it. And also right. But I, I think that in, I think it just playing pure check call or check fold would be very reasonable in this spot. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next spot. So cool. that's an interesting first spot. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we do have, uh, uh, this is one of the spots where you said like the population is not doing it and we may as well cut down from our range because for the reasons that it's going to be tough to play post flop, mm -hmm. uh, if the button fails and this is one such opportunity where we don't have any of the clubs, we don't, uh, uh, we have the Jack of Diamonds blocking a king, um, mm -hmm. and we are faced again with the tough decision whether to see bet or not on a king high board. But looks uh, like a king high, you know, it's not much coordinated, but he does have fours and threes. Um, mm -hmm. So that makes it a little bit tougher. So we wanted to bet our king X for protection because he can have five, six suited. He can have, you know, the clubs. He can have... Uh, uh, you know, uh, draws as uh, like draws that can mm -hmm. beat us in the future. So we have to protect our king x here by betting. So does that mean yeah. that Jack Ten falls into the same bucket? Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I think on a king high board, almost every king high board in a three bet pot, you should just bet range. Um, because you the these boards are generally going to give you really, really strong equity advantage. Um, your opponent is going to have a decent chunk of King X, but you have all the aces, the ace king. You mm -hmm. have a lot more king queen. Kings, yes. um, you know, kings, of course, yeah. Uh, and villain's range is just a lot of middle cards here. So I, I'd be very surprised if this board wasn't a high frequency small C-bet here for oh, a small blind. Okay. All right, let's go with it. And then that's correct. Yeah. And then he calls. So when he calls, his his uh, range is now condensed to have some equity on this board, and we have yeah. none. So mm -hmm. it's it's pretty it's pretty much it. for me. It's a 
it's a give up i don't know what's what's going to happen in the solar world <laughs> to keep persisting mm-hmm. with is this one of our bluffs maybe i don't know uh, like i would have i, I would bluff with some sort of equity in equity. um I, i don't think this is the worst bluff candidate because we do we do unblock um Clubs. some of that well okay having having the jack of diamonds is kind of bad because uh hands like jack 10 of diamonds queen jack of diamonds yeah. ace jack of diamonds yeah. are hands we want villain to be uh folding this turn with yeah. but not having a not having a club is good um because there's a lot of clubs that villain can just fold uh we do have outs against some of the sort of middle portion of villain's range that's supposed to be calling here like eights and nines are supposed to call here with a decent frequency although they most yeah. likely won't um so i don't think this is the worst candidate and uh, what what's also very relevant in three bet pots is that a lot of your bluffs are going to be quite unintuitive on mm. turns and rivers because you can't always you can't always guarantee constructing in a way where you have really natural barrels on every turn so for example here like you can't you can't like figure out an easy way to have a lot of like 6x hands in your 3 bet range that you can barrel on this specific board mm. so even though having a 6 or a 7 in your hand would probably be the ideal sort of uh yeah the bl- bluffing combo on this board like you can't just have those in your range in every spot right so you kind of have to reach for combos in some instances and i think that jack 10 offsuit if our only options are shovel check i expect this hand is going to play a check but what you'll find is if you run if you run sims with smaller sizings allowed here it it wouldn't shock me if we had this board playing like this hand playing as a double barrel candidate but on the assumption that we we bet really small on the flop and then we bet small again on the turn and then we jam the river because we block king 10 and king jack yep. so like if we were able to get to the river with a greater than 1 to 1 spr i don't think i would hate betting like one third pot on this turn with the intent yeah. to jam some rivers uh but if the option is shove or check i think it probably falls into a check but it wouldn't shock me if it shoves here yep okay so that's the check and check is probably okay, correct is and okay, cool. against a uh, small bet it's a give up for me yeah it's, <laughs> it's a clear it's a clear fold it's yeah clear um fold, so he's not folding for a jam anyway he's committed so. well the the thing is the thing is what's noteworthy is that he will have folds to a jam here this is in the in the solver he's going to have to have folds to a jam and yes. in fact um at the in position what you'll see in in a lot of solves is that the solver will not necessarily in fact it will quite wet quite rarely want the in position player to be all in before the river like it's mm. not going to want them to uh to just shove for stacks on this river because it it gives the out of position player clear decisions and it doesn't allow them to it doesn't allow the in position player to get to the river and shove with a polarized range and force the out of position player to bluff catch yeah. so so if if we had different sizing options here it would probably want in position to block for like a four big blind sizing and then out of position calls in position has some some river shoves and some check backs etc so it doesn't shock me that it's using the nine big blind sizing here because even though it's going to leave a really weird spr on river it's going to leave like less than 40% of pot behind um the solver will want to do that because that will allow the in position player to polarize on the river and yep. have yep. bluffs that can put out of position into a break even bluff catching position so um you you will actually see in these turn spots at a 1 to 1 spr that in position doesn't just jam for pot that yeah. often All right, let's fold here and then see and yes we made the correct decision and uh I just wanted to go through the uh yeah uh the thing that you said about rain splits that king high board sure. should be a rain seabed and that is exactly mm-hmm. what the solver does as you guys can say mm-hmm. like uh 6.34 uh yes there are some splits but it's basically a range bet um yeah. option uh right. and uh, regardless you know regardless of we holding jack 10 off suit or you know eight nine suited of a completely different suit it doesn't matter right we have to yeah. close our mm-hmm. eyes and then range bet and that's something that mm-hmm. 
you got, I mean, uh, not mad, but the audience has to do it. I think uh, sometimes we look at the whole card and then get attached to uh, the strength of the whole card rather than the range. And mm -hmm. uh, we stop from doing it. And then this is something that right. you guys should uh, learn from here. Uh, so let's also let's look at the range distribution. You mentioned about range distribution, right? Like King mm -hmm. High board is good for our range. Let me see the range distribution in terms of out of position, which is the small blind has mm -hmm. a huge range advantage. Of course, like the, like the middle portion even dips mm -hmm. for out of, for in position player because he's the yeah. caller. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a slight advantage on the top, and then it kind of merges on uh, yeah uh, emerges in there. So so that so that top portion is going to be the in position player being able to have fours and threes, but out of Four position player threes. not. And then yeah. where they meet, where they meet at the top is the out of position player can have kings, and the in position player also can have kings because they're supposed to trap with kings yeah. pre. Uh, so. And that's what you guys can see here too. If you guys are wondering, like uh, as Matt said, like kings, and then in position player can have fours and threes, uh, whereas we don't have fours and threes, as you guys can see. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you guys can see here in this table below as well. So. And uh, let's go. Uh, anything else do you want to say on this? Uh, no, I mean, I, I think the only thing I would probably other I would probably add other than that is uh, if people are struggling with spots where they 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 feel like they should range bet but they don't want to, you mm -hmm. can just like decrease your sizing further. Like if you if you feel uncomfortable betting your whole range for one third pot here, then bet a quarter pot. Or bet twenty percent pot, bet fifteen percent pot. But That's a good idea. The, imp yeah. the important thing is that you don't put yourself into a position where you have a checking range on a board that's really favorable for your range, because you're almost guaranteed to be losing EV by doing that with any significant frequency. Because yeah. you're either your checking range is going to be unprotected and capped in a way where your opponent might be able to take advantage of that. Or um, you're going to be forced to check hands that don't really want to check. Like you don't, you really don't ever want to force yourself to have to check pocket kings on a king high board in this spot because pocket kings wants to bet bet, bet flop, bet turn, shove river. You know, kings wants to be all in, yep. and people's people's tendency is to want to like trap with top set and things like that. Yep. But the reason people do that is because they don't consider betting like a super small sizing. And yep. the reality is that at these very low SPRs in three bet pots, super small sizings should be happening a lot, but they just, mm. they just aren't, you know, they just, people yeah. just don't use them. Um, so that's, I think uh, an important thing about three bet pots that people should note that one third pot is kind of a, at, at this SPR of like, what is it? One and a half to one betting one third pot on the flop is actually, you know, it's a relatively large size. Yep. 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 That's, that's a good point, Matt. I think and also like from, uh, from a turn perspective, like we battled, he called, is there any mm -hmm. turn card that you do think that we should keep battling? Like, uh, or Oh yeah. Yeah. If the turn is like an offsuit queen or okay. well, an offsuit queen for sure, we should just jam. Um, okay. At, like at that SPR, when we get there out of position at like a 0. 0.7 SPR, I, yeah. I would, I mean, I might be wrong in the solve, but I, I would expect that on a queen, we just jam. Um, I bet it's on you. My bet is on you, Matt, and you're right. <laughs> I think queen of spade is an all in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there we go. So on a queen, I think jamming is good. Um, but queen of clubs? Ace, queen of clubs, queen of clubs probably less so because we're yeah. jamming into a range where sometimes we're just drawing stone yeah. dead. Yeah. That's uh, it's checking more of a check. Of the yeah. yeah. Uh, an ace or a nine is probably still an okay jam. I'm not. I'm not positive about those ones, but yep. I think we're it is, it is. probably okay. It is. Yeah. Okay. It is, so it is. A, ace or a nine, basically just turning equity like that is is a good spot to be in, and um, that's one of the reasons why Jack yeah. Ten can bet can bet that flop relatively comfortably. It's because we have at least some turn cards that, as the out of position player, we can that's just be shoving all in and. The, the big difference here between being out of position and being in position at a low SPR is the out of position player 
doesn't mind shutting the hand down before the river, right? The out of position player, if we bet one third pot on the turn, we don't mind just shoving shoving the turn with an open ender and hoping we get a fold, right? Because yeah. the alternative is having to play two streets out of position by checking. Yep. Whereas when we're in position, we we want to force the out of position player to play more streets. We don't want to just be all in on the turn and not have to play a river because playing the river mm. is good for us and bad for them. Exactly, exactly. So there you go. Uh, 10 Jack, I mean, Jack 10 of suit that are cards that you should be bluffing on the on the turn guys uh definitely put it here first <laughs> all right we're getting a variety of boards today a king high coordinated yeah. board and now we are getting a paired board pocket i mean mm -hmm. jack jack four rainbow um and we don't have any of the suit which is probably a good thing mm -hmm. or a bad thing i don't know <laughs> it's, my mind it's, is not it, thinking at the it's kind of a neutral thing like we we wrap around the jack, which is nice. We have over cards to a lot of pairs. You know, we we have definitely pretty reasonable equity here. And I think this is another board where, and, and this is sure. very true on pa paired boards as a whole. This is this is probably just a range bet board. And range bet. It, it's possible that the solve will want to check some hands, but I don't think it I don't think that's that likely because we still have a good chunk of Jack X here jack the same X way they do. Hands, yeah. Like we do have, we have some King Jack, some Queen Jack, you know, stuff like that. So yep. um I imagine just range bet here is gonna work well. He calls seven of hearts okay. again. We are just uh, uh at the mercy of the turn card. <laughs> yeah, really this is any this is a spot where if the turn was an eight, a ten, a king, king. uh I think we could jam. I think even jamming on a queen for value is fine. I think even jamming on, well, <laughs> jamming a nine is a bit ambitious. It's hard mm. to get called by worse than a nine. But um, I think that, yeah, this seven of hearts, like we we obviously ideally are going to have a decent chunk of hands in our range that can just jam this turn. Mm. So we're going to have hearts that at the flop and turn to flush draw. Every now and again, we might have some 10 9 that turned a gut shot, stuff like that. The 10 9s are pretty reasonable hands to jam here because they yep. unblock all of the overcard floats. Yep. Like they unblock the king queens and stuff like that that float. Um, and they still have equity against a pair. So this hand just falls fairly naturally into a check. And our check can be our check can be fairly protected here. You know, our check can be can have some uh some aces and kings in it mm. our check can have some jack x in it um and then also some hands that are check folding like this one plus some hands that are just looking for showdown value like ace king um this so is an interesting this, spot yeah it's again like um uh, do, do you do you uh do you have a smaller sizing on the river here probably not right because um, we want him I, to fold right ace high hands well, if it's a well you i think you can have a smaller size i think that uh, you have some hands in your range that benefit from a smaller size, but you don't have that many. Yeah. Like you have some pocket eights, nines, those hands, but those are still very, very strong. So they almost just have an incentive to jam. Um, actually, the more I think about it, the more I feel like we probably shouldn't have a smaller size. But if the river was on a different river, if the river was like an eight or if the river was a heart, maybe mm. like let's say the queen of hearts river, I think on that kind of river, we have some hands that want to just block um, mm. for like four big blinds or something. Uh, on this particular river, all of our over pairs that we might have checked on the turn are essentially the nuts now. Villain almost never has quads because it's just really hard to have quads. And uh, hands like even like a seven, if we turned a seven with eight, seven suited or something like that, that hand is strong enough that it might be able to jam and you know get looked up by ace ace high sometimes you mm, know so mm. i i think that shoving um shoving or checking is probably good on this particular river uh with this hand i i definitely think we should we should bluff i don't think bluff. this hand is a check yeah i wow. think this is okay i think this is i think this is too low down in our range yeah. um and it it just absolutely sucks to check here and then lose <laughs> and to like king king queen back. offsuit Right. King like Queen. we the the problem is here, we we unblock all the ace highs. We unblock all the weakest ace highs that wrap around the four, like the ace five, ace, ace three, five. ace deuce. Yeah. We 
we unblock a lot of the 10 highs and nine highs that float the flop with a backdoor straight draw, which of course we're ahead of those hands, but it still helps us to bluff because that just adds more folding hands to their range. Yep, yep. And it means, you know, we, we also benefit from not checking and allowing them to potentially bluff us. Yep. Um, I think it would be slightly better to have queen nine of clubs because we would block queen jack of clubs, but then in the solve, Villain is supposed to be jamming Queen Jack of Clubs pre anyway. So yeah. they're not even supposed to have that hand here. Um, right. I I expect, I mean, it, ultimately, this is a bluff candidate on the river and it's a solve. So it's probably going to be close to break even. It might be a slightly negative EV bluff, but it wouldn't surprise me if this is a pretty decent bluffing candidate here. All because right. I think a lot of a lot of our 10 nines and 10 eights and nine eights and stuff would probably have shoved the turn. So this hand is, is a, one of our better remaining bluffs. I think oh, I'm, I'm excited to say it. Let's see. Uh, it's an okay decision, but it's, uh, okay. it's still 13% of the time, like more than 10% of the time okay. it's actually shoving. Okay. So, That's fair. so yeah. I think it's more into accuracy. Like if you just run a little bit more time, I think some of the frequency mm -hmm. will go uh, I, the, some of the frequencies will go down. I think probably ten mm -hmm. ninety, and then it'll be like a sure. It'll be like a it'll be like a like zero EV for pot, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah, so exactly that makes sense. So that makes sense. Yeah, I think that with with a lot of like like when you see us when you see an outcome like this on the river where it tells you to bluff like a small frequency, what it's telling you is that that hand has pretty neutral bluffing characteristics. So yeah. it you know it doesn't. Um, it doesn't necessarily have enough blocking power that it functions as an obvious bluff, but it also doesn't have, like it's not a uh, a bad bluffing candidate. Like you can kind of see here, a lot of our ace high is not bluffing the river. It's not bluffing at our, all, yeah. Our ace high has showdown value and it also blocks the stuff we're trying to get to fold. Yep, um, yep. Our, our nine high, our nine eight, our king high for king six, those hands are blocking some of the stuff that uh, we're... Yeah. trying to get to fold so those hands are bluffing river um King six suited and Eight, then nine and suited. The, yeah the rest of our bluffs are just coming from we're just drawing from a little bit of the king 10 off queen 10 off yep um for some reason a little bit of ace five off which is interesting and then queen nine is, is a little bit in there so yeah it's a fairly neutral bluffing candidate and if we look at i think it, to, to look at this in in practical terms like, can we switch to taking a look at what our opponent is supposed to call off on this river? Because oh, my hypothesis would be that our opponent is probably overfolding this spot uh, and therefore open this just bluffing here is probably me, good. Let me open this in solo place so we can see what he calls off. Sure, yeah. So let's say we... Uh, we shove okay, the we let it Okay, so this is the calling thing right so yeah let's see. he's, he's going to call 52 percent of the time uh okay. and if you do click on the frequencies yeah okay. he's having all obviously so, jack x is calling yeah nines he's, is calling he's supposed uh, to have a jack here some frequency he's also supposed to call yeah like he's supposed to hero off with fives threes deuces yeah. ace 10 high ace nine high ace eight high even like a tiny shred of king queen high mm. and People just aren't doing that. Like nobody's yeah. nobody's calling king queen high here. Nobody's king calling queen deuces hearts here. Is calling. I think king queen hearts. Right. The population folds all the time. So they miss the draw. Right. They're just folding. You know. Yeah. But, uh, people like people on this on this river. People might not even call like a seven. You know, they might not even call uh, seven six or you know something like that that they end up with here. So I don't think you're getting bluff catched with ace high or with the the nut under pair um, very often. So. Ultimately, I think any king high or worse is probably a pretty decent bluff candidate here. I think you're, I think you're getting enough folds that yep. you can just bluff. You can just bluff everything that doesn't have showdown value, and that's a pretty consistent theme in a lot of tournament spots. Yep. Like you, you can just bluff a lot in tournaments because people just don't call off, yep. and they have very in a lot of spots they have very limited incentive to because the average player pool tendency is to not bluff enough, right? So mm -hmm. when the when the average player doesn't bluff enough, you have no incentive to bluff catch. Bluff but catch. when the average player doesn't bluff catch, you now have a ton of incentive to bluff. So if our opponent doesn't have any specific image read on us and we don't think that they're going to be heavily inclined to bluff catch here, 
we should just go ahead and bluff the queen nine of spades. Bluff and, the queen and nine. I think that's probably yeah. one of those good hands too. So mm -hmm. uh, for all the reasons that we mentioned. <laughs> sure. All right, next spot. So we do have a middling coordinated kind of boat. Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. we do have the nine of diamonds, which is which is probably a good thing for us. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we can we can improve a lot uh, on the turns, and so it's like a double barrel that I'm thinking already. Uh, so uh -huh. if it's a double barrel, then I need to barrel the flop, and uh, that's my that's my thinking to to bet flop, and if on any improved cards, I need to barrel to make him fold. Uh, the range perspective, I I do have over pairs i do have some 10x um he can have a lot of flush draws he can have a lot of coordinated like hands that that interact with this board a lot too mm -hmm. so uh so yeah so my first instinct is to just bet and then with an option to bet again on the turn if if i improve that's mm -hmm. my thinking i i don't think that's going to be a bad line here i think that it is a bit more of a complicated board than the other ones, though, in that um, this is a board where a small bet sizing doesn't really give our opponent any particularly tough decisions. You know, let, let's say we bet one third or smaller than that here. We might have a pretty decent equity advantage. So we don't we're not in a spot where betting small with range is going to be terrible, let's say. But we are in a spot where particularly when we have ace nine, um, nothing that we are heavily dominating. Well, okay. A few hands that we're heavily dominating are going to call. So Jack nine, eight, nine, those hands are going to peel. Um, he doesn't have nine, six in range, but um, so we get called by a little bit of stuff that we dominate, mm -hmm. but we're also not going to be able to fold out very many offsuit hands that have a better diamond in them, which is not ideal. You know, we can't really fold out even like queen Jack with the Jack of diamonds by betting mm -hmm. small here. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think that it's out of the question here to have a strategy where like, again, if we had more sizing options, I think just having some hands that just jam here for protection is kind of okay on a board mm -hmm. like this. Yep. Um, and then having some hands that, uh, we'll just check, I think is fine too, because you are going to face a bet sometimes when you check and you're going to get to check jam and things like yep. that. So I think this is a board where strategy wise, I would probably pick between, a I'd probably have a, 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 yeah, a decent number of checks. And then um, one third is an okay sizing. If you, if you're planning to, you know, set up some turn jams um, and all in is a sizing that you might, be able to use with some hands like i say uh yep so I, I i do think checking a fair amount is going to be okay on this board but i i don't think you're going to do that badly by range betting either it's going to it's going to be pretty close together one way or the All other right. i would imagine so, so let's go this hand i would slightly favor checking check okay um okay so checking is okay it doesn't checking it. it's an okay um, decision it's not a bad decision but it's uh still sure. making us money still making 3.3 uh, ev so sure okay. um yeah i mean where it's gonna we're gonna struggle to fold ace high with the diamond once we face yeah. this small bet so i think we we probably just call now and then um we're going to be in some awkward turn spots but <laughs> calling very is the difficult correct decision. to fold uh, yeah very difficult to fold here once we check yeah. um now we uh, now we just have to check turn there's no check, real check reason turn. to lead out here yeah. Okay. This is one of the reasons why we can get away with uh, with um, checking the or check calling flop because this is obviously such a clean out. Uh, the problem though is that this is not a board where we have a lot of obvious bluff candidates in this line, and we're also if we were to jam here, which is our only sizing option, um, we are jamming into a range that is totally uncapped. Villain has. Yep. Well, actually, no, it's not because villain he doesn't have the queen. Turn. He checked the turn, suited. right? So, yeah. But I, oh, okay. So I was thinking he doesn't have queen jack suited pre because he's jamming pre with that in this in the solve. But yeah. he does have queen jack offsuit. So, um, he is he, he is completely uncapped here. He also retains some ace ten. Yeah. Um, he retains a little bit of ace jack probably as well. Um, mm. although ace jack might not bet the flop. So, I I think this hand is 
slightly better. Mm, it's probably slightly better as a jam than as a check, just because having the nine of diamonds means we we block a lot of the hands that would bluff when we check to him. So we block some of his jack nine of diamonds that checks back the turn, eight nine of diamonds, all that and stuff. Um, so we need to, I, I think we are in the value hunting mode and then we have a reason to uh, bet now because he's going to check his showdown driven value. So if you just go bet, he might look up with a uh, 10 here sometimes. So Yeah, it's, it's also, it's not ideal to have the ace of clubs here because we kind of, in order to, to, successfully value bet here we want him to be able to call with like ace five of clubs with some frequency oh, that yeah. peeled the flop um so it's it's definitely close one way or the other i suppose this is one of the issues with with check calling on this flop it's probably one of the reasons why the solve doesn't love check call um but let's go with the shove and we'll see what uh see what happens yeah shove is okay uh, okay. shove is correct so Okay. And then we have to we have to bet here. I think that's what it's uh, and it is it is a kind of a range. I think seventy five percent. Oh, of the time it's it, pretty it, close. Okay, yeah, I think that's fine. I think this this is a spot there where having seen that the solver likes you know seventy five percent with a one third sizing. I think if you size down to like quarter pot or even less than that, you can justify just going to a hundred. So it actually 100. might play it might play pretty reasonably as a range bet. Um, it. Uh, yeah, again, the the twelve point six seven sizing on the flop there is a little bit awkward because we we might have an incentive to jam on that flop for one for one point five times pot, but yeah. we don't have a ton of incentive to use the two thirds sizing when it puts us at a like a half pot SPR on the turn. So yeah. the the larger sizing is a little bit redundant there at this uh, SPR. All right, um, all right, let's play a few more hands. Uh, maybe, sure. um, do you have any particular board types in mind that you wanted to go through, Matt? So, that um, this is this game? one is a this one is a oh. good category, honestly. Yeah. Like, this, the oh, we just lost <laughs> just, it. Oh, okay, never mind. I just okay, and there, so, uh, that was it a was nine seven board. five. So, nine, it was seven, nine seven five. five. Okay, yeah. nine high board. Let's go. That's not a paired board, it's a two tone board, so which is good. Mm -hmm. Um, and the less any. So hopefully we get a similar board. Nine six three. Okay. Nine six three. Okay, is it's it a little, it's enough? a little <laughs> different, but it, it's close enough. Yeah, this is this is a texture where it's it's a little bit different from nine seven five in that when there's a flop straight, it does change things a little bit. Um, but the the difference between boards that have a flop straight and boards that have a flopped flush is that with the flopped flush there's always going to be more combos in your opponent's range that flop the hand. There's, there's going to be more suited combos that flop a flush in a, in the average range than there are combos that flop a straight. Yep. Unless like, well, it, particularly on nine, seven, five, like it's really hard for them to have six, eight specifically because they only have six, eight suited. The only exception is going to be boards where all of the offsuit combos of the flop straight are in their range. So for example, like nine, eight, seven, yeah. or something like that where, or qu queen, 10, nine, where they have all the king, king, jack offsuit, stuff like that. Uh -huh. Those flop straight boards are a little bit different because there are now like in a lot of cases is 16 combos of flop straights, which is quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the nine, seven, five, when they can never have eight, six offsuit, but maybe they can have a little bit eight, eight, six suited, but probably not very much. That kind of board is um, is one where uh, it's like people people's natural inclination is to be playing it very cautiously, and that's good in a lot of spots. But at the same time, what's weird is people people make mistakes on a monotone flop that they wouldn't make on a on like a three straight flop. Mm, you know, like mm. they they play monotone flops a little too aggressively because they want to protect against the fourth flush card. Fourth flush card but they yeah. don't they don't play flop straight boards aggressively enough because they overestimate how easy it is to flop a straight, or they overestimate um, how easy it is to you know to have the board make a straight on the turn. So it's kind of a little bit of a an interesting tendency that people have there. Um, so, so are you saying like they, uh, the population uh, bets more on monotone board and bets less on already, you I'm, know, straight? I'm saying that they, 
they bet too big on monotone boards because they're too focused oh. on protection. Okay. And okay. then they, on straight boards, they sometimes betting big on those boards can be fairly correct, mm -hmm. but they're too reluctant to do it basically. Like that they, like they, people just, they look at, basically they think that monotone boards are more dynamic than they actually are. Yep. And they think that the straight card boards are less dynamic than they actually are. And they also, they don't pay that much attention to whether or not the opponent can actually have the flop straight. So like, Nine eight seven is very different than seven five four or nine seven five, mm -hmm. and it's especially very different to six four three. Right? Yep. Those are massively different boards, even though they're all very dynamic boards. Yep. Um, I think people people tend to play Jack nine seven the same way they play six five three, yep. and that those are those are definitely boards that play very differently. Okay. Oh, this is an easy, easy board for me. <laughs> I would sure. Just, I mean, when you uh, have when you have kings on the nine high board, everything's pretty easy, right? So yeah, we should just bet range here. I think. <laughs> yeah. Like I was thinking to choose a bigger sizing, but yeah, uh, let's go with uh, range bet. And range bet is obviously yeah. the correct answer. So <laughs> yeah, the uh, the problem with the the bigger sizing here, uh, and let me just see the result. Yeah, the bigger sizing is not really used very much. Yeah. The problem with the bigger sizing here is that. It's too big. The bigger sizing, specifically when you have kings, the bigger sizing just allows your opponent to get away with folding all of the hands that kings is crushing. Yep, so yep. all of the king queens and king tens with a back door and stuff like that, when you bet large, those hands can just fold here. But when you bet small, those hands have to peel and that yep. benefits pocket kings a lot. So even yep. though kings sometimes on some boards is going to be kind of in need of some protection. Yep. It's not going to be in need of so much protection that it can't, um, it can't actually go ahead and bet, you know, where it can't, it can't bet small is what I mean. All right. One final hand, Matt, and then we call it a sure. wrap. It's been more than an hour. So um, my brain is dead. I don't know about yours. I think, uh, <laughs> no problem. Information, information overload, I, I think. I, I do this uh, all the time, man. I, I could do this all day. <laughs> uh, so let's do one more hand and then wrap it up. Um, sure. It's a six right. high board and uh, it's a coordinated okay. board. Of course, three, four makes us trade and seven, mm -hmm. eight. They do have seven, eight. They do have six, seven. They do have four, five suited. Um, we do have a king of clubs, which is good. Uh, king 10 off suit, we do have, and which is good uh, in a sense, like we can get to fold better hands in villain's range. Um, mm -hmm. So it more calls for betting, uh, but they do have sixes and fives and deuces. So mm -hmm. they do have the nut advantage, whereas we do have the range advantage in a sense. Uh, yeah, so what do you although do at, at, at this SPR, not advantage isn't super consequential because we're going to be all in before the river often enough that the the villain isn't going to get very many opportunities to polarize against us anyway mm -hmm. and ultimately here um when we have the top of our range and they have the top of our range that they have the top of their range uh we're just supposed to be all in anyway like if we have aces and they flop the set here we're just supposed to always get stacked like there's, yeah. there's never going to be a way for us to get away from it so yeah. i think in this spot the thing that's most consequential is that villain can't actually have very many combinations of hands here that have a straight draw so there's not that many 3x and 4x hands in their range um and in fact it's the it's the nine eight eight, seven, nine, seven portion of their range. It's a little bit more prevalent. Mm -hmm. I think the, um, I, it wouldn't surprise me here if, if we were allowed to use like a, like an eight or nine big blind sizing here with the intent to shove the river, but well, sorry, with the intent to shove the turn, I think that would, that would be okay. I think that six is, still an okay sizing for us to use because villain just has so many over cards that are going to be in a, a tricky continuing spot. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I would be okay with betting a reasonably high frequency here. Um, and you know, there's, there's a lot of spots where yep. betting, betting range small is still going to be fine. So I think this one's probably going to be okay, especially when we have a club, this is a good candidate. 
to bet that he's correct and then like he the calls bet. okay and three of spades it is uh, again if he called the board with intractability i think i like i think this is a bad call for our range uh in general it is um, um it is it is but the the fact that it made four to a straight with the four isn't super consequential here mm. because neither player is really going to have a four very much mm. um and a lot of the time like let's say ace four suited uh some hand containing a four is going to be all in on the flop with some frequency anyway so the the straight is not super consequential here but what is worth noting is that if we jam here we are jamming into a range that contains at least a good frequent a, a good number of hands that are just never folding no matter what right so where we're jamming into a range that contains maybe a, the occasional set that didn't raise the flop uh, a little tiny bit of 4x um and a couple of over pairs as well that probably won't fold. Whereas when we check, a lot of our hands are uh, in a decent spot because we're not actually, we're not going to face a bet very often on this turn. Um, villains' hands like eights, nines, tens can't really jam the turn for any kind of value. Um, they can't really get much denial here. So, I don't expect we're going to face too many bets once we check. And I think, I think a lot of our range is going to want to check here, mostly just because we we're facing a range that when we shove our opponent has relatively easy decisions. So I would think if we do have hands that shove here, it's just going to be a lot of clubs and then like over pairs that are just wanting to get value. But I, I wouldn't, I would expect us to play a relatively high check frequency here if I, if our only option is to shove or check. Yep. All right, I think. Check is okay. Check is an okay decision. Looks like it's shoving. Yeah. I think at the moment, well, if he bets, now we there's no other option but to fold. We, yeah, now we have to fold, yeah. Which is good, but shoving 90% of the time with King 10. Wow, interesting. Uh, yeah. King 10 off, King Jack okay. off, Ace 10 off. So it looks like it's off. playing about 50-50 about between shove and check. That's interesting, um, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, so, it's uh, more than that, but yeah, but oh yeah, in terms of overall range, yeah, fifty. Range, 50. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so the the hands which are shoving are the over pairs which need a little bit of protection. So queens, jacks, tens, nines, eights, uh, aces and kings are checking, which makes sense because they don't need protection. Some of the ace x that blocks ace four is jamming. Okay. Um, there's really no four x at all in our range here, which is yeah. interesting. Um, I'm curious what villain's turn call range is supposed to look like. If we can take a look at that, turn call like if they, if we, the if villain. we shove, if we shove, okay. what hand are they supposed to call with? Spear. And if you just do shove, it's calling ninety sixty two percent. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, he calls. okay, so. He's, he's supposed to call off on turn with like a six or a five a lot of the time. Yeah. He doesn't have a lot of four X either. Like you can see, he doesn't have fours yeah. here. He only has a little bit of five, four, king, four, queen, yeah. four. So that's kind of what I was getting at here. And I'm not super concerned about running into a four. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. But I also think like in practical terms, you know, we can see, even some of his like ace nine high is supposed to call. I don't know if that's just clubs or what, but there's a lot of hands here that are supposed to call off on the turn that in realistic terms, I don't think are ever really going to call. So it actually would probably be a spot where over bluffing this turn would not be a huge mistake. But yep. generally speaking, I would also expect that if it goes check, check on the turn, villain's probably going to overfold that river as well. So yep, yep. we kind of have to, like we have a, a couple of good bluff lines available to us uh, here and we sort of have to decide between them really. Okay. All right, cool. I think that's a good, good insight, uh, Matt. And uh, the, right. uh, I really thank you for being uh, the first guest on the show. <laughs> so <laughs> no that's a, <laughs> we should mint an Happy NFT it. for it. Uh, <laughs> I I don't I don't know enough about NFTs to know whether we should do that or not, but I, I I imagine you probably do since you brought it up. So if you want to do that, you go ahead. I don't I don't know how I that mean, works. I mean, give it to our users. You know, like that's yeah. uh, 
uh, adding more value to the users. But yeah, <laughs> but um, just wanted to finish up on the note, like uh, WSOP is starting in 22 days. The countdown started. Yes. So uh, yes. what's your plan? What are you doing? And how we can follow your updates? Uh, sure, yeah. I, I'm going to be posting updates mostly on Instagram. So my Instagram account is uh, at Mental Health Matt. So at M-N-T-A-L. I will, H- I'll get it H-L-T-H. off you and post it in the, sorry, am I, I'll get it sure, off you okay. and post it on the show notes so people can, I can have sure. access to it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm going to be playing a lot, uh, playing pretty much every day, I would expect, um, and uh, looking forward to hopefully trying to win a bracelet. I, uh, I have one okay. second place already online this year, so I'm I'm trying to, I'm hoping not to add to my collection of two second places. Uh, <laughs> I, want to, I want to try to go one better this try, year. Try and win it. And uh, if, if like I if you, I can't get the bracelet, I hope I can at least bust Chris Mormon from something because he's the guy who beat me for a bracelet this year. Oh, so no. I, uh, I wanna I wanna get it. I wanna get revenge on him. He he already had a bracelet. I thought he could just let me have this one, but apparently not. You know, like if you if you're winning bracelet, we want to have you again on the show, and then like we need sure. to go through the hands Absolutely. that you that you played. So Absolutely. that will be a yeah, good, be good session that. for the, for the user. So you called it, we called it here. So the first show that you're going to be on after <laughs> you winning the bracelet is this show. Okay. You got the exclusive. All right. Exclusive, good. exclusive, Matt exclusive. So thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt, for being right. here. I uh, hope you no guys problem, are finding it useful. Let me work out how to stop the recording. So there you go.